when in my last lecture i told you something about the political and historical background to the kite runner by kale rusmi and to for the fag end of my lecture i have to doubt that in my next lecture there is this lecture that i am going to deliver now mm-hmm. i would like to tell you something about khaled husaini's art of characterization so here goes dear friend first thing that we have to understand is when you characterize someone in a literary work you have to do it in an indirect manner for example we have to understand that when shakespeare characterizes macbeth he has to do it by an indirect manner because he cannot so magnet for what he or she, she is and privately using he or she because magnet is here in my analysis representative of every man so we characterize he or she a work of art so magnet is not seen by us we see someone impersonating macbeth or acting in the role of macbeth so what we have to do is first we have to understand that shakespeare characterizes macbeth with the help of two things number one what he does and number two what he says so in any work of art any work of literature someone is characterized primarily by what he does or she does or and and also by what he or she says okay that was the most basic primer of characterization then with the advent of introspective writing of which the culmination is the psychological and the stream of consciousness novel another dimension is added to this art of characterization that is what he or she thinks so first there is what he or she does what he or she says what he or she thinks okay this is number 1 that is the first category of characterization is by creating a pen picture a picture of someone with the help of what he says what he does and what he thinks you can for my feminist students you can very easily substitute he with she i am not going to go into the detail come back on another level you characterize someone in a literary work first by showing him or her and second by describing him or her through others that means how other characters respond to a given character that specific character is characterized for example okay let us again take the uh, example of macbeth see 
think about Act 1, Scene 2 of Macbeth. They are the bleeding surgeon. The soldier describes Macbeth in a very eulogistic way by heaping praise upon praise on Macbeth. Bellona's bridegroom, Valar's Medinan, and so on and so forth. But the same Macbeth at the back end of the play is described by others as this dead butcher and this queen like queen. So obviously, it is not only through what is or she says as a thing. It is also by how he or she is viewed by others. These are the ways that someone or a group of person is characterized in or through a work of literature. <coughs> Let us now, after this preliminary, let us now come to Khaled Hussain's The Night Runners. As I had already told you, in course of my one of my previous lectures, that the, the, the main characters in this story are obviously Amir, Hassan, Baba, Rahim Khan, and Asif. Obviously, there are others like Ali, Shorab. Uh, that one he is, that is uh, Suraya and her parents. These are the main characters. Now how these characters are presented before us, how they are represented before us, needs to be analyzed on the basis of, in the light of the two categories that I have pointed out. Think about it. Why do we consider the five characters as main characters? Baba, Amir, Rahim Khan, Hassan, and Asif, the anti-hero or the villain of the people. Now, why am I saying that he is the anti-hero or the villain? Because uh, in Khaled Hussein's worldview, good and evil are not categories very easily imposed upon someone. Because we see that beneath the veneer of goodness there is much evil lurking in unexpected places. Similarly, behind the surface of apparently unmitigated villainy, there are also wishes of kindness and so on and so forth. So, Harvard Hussein seems to tell us that dying someone is very, very ticklish as a proposition and should be resorted to in extremes. Now, think about it. How do we find these characters of the five characters that we actually pick up for our discussion Aviv is seen and shown by the writer as someone who has a past, past of cowardice 
and even mean. But ultimately, he shares conventional morality and selfish interest in order to reclaim his soul, in order to resurrect his moral career by ultimately standing up for the right of Saurabh against the brutality of the Taliban regime as encapsulated or embodied by assets. But at the same time, he has got even of streaks of cowardice, as can be evinced by his inability to stand up for his friend Hassan when the latter is raped by the letter is raped by sodomized by Asad. Similarly, he tries to frame up Hassan in order to get rid of these morally dangerous and always incriminating presence of Ali in an indirect manner and Hassan in a direct way. Okay then, much of the character of Amir is actually revealed by what he says, what he does, and also what he thinks. The inner dynamics of his action, encompassing both the network of motives and of selfish interests. Then, this particular character is also represented to us with the help of hearsay, as they call it. Hearsay, how others respond to him, how others describe him. Amir is someone in this novel who is Perpetrator. Obviously, Amir is somebody who is least commented upon because he always wills the narrative givers. But at the same time, there are others who either respond directly, uh, presently or unpleasantly to Amir showing thereby how Amir is held up by them either for ridicule or for adulation. For example, you will see that Amir has often been spoken of in a slighting manner by Baba, the ultra male, because of his apparently peaceful habits and apparently weak and more gentle experience. Similarly, Amir is talked about or responded to by General Tawahiri, for example, when he wants to give a short story manuscript to Suraya, uh, he is presented by Iqbal Tawahiri, who is very diplomatic in his in returning the manuscript to Amish. 
of the other characters baba comes up second in terms of his importance in the narrative baba that is amit's father who is often talked about in front of us as aga sahib now so far as his conduct is concerned he seems to be a very genial kind of a generous man who <coughs> does a lot for his friend for his friend for his family for amir and so on and so forth it fact testified to by the attendance of quite a large number of ex afghans during baba's funeral in america but as you understand later on baba has been guilty of one of the grossest of all deceptions because he has deceived his own son amir and also his other son that is hasan that hasan is the illegitimate child of amir's father baba he is a fact that he is revealed to him long after the death of baba so obviously amir reaction to baba changes to a great extent after this event but yet at the same time uh i i am using yet at the same time in case of but here yeah. and that's uh, that's why this hesitation okay now the same baba is talked of in glowing towns by others for example one quotation that haunts me out of the pages of the saitranat is rahim khan instruction or exhortation to amir forgive me forgive me if you will obviously he asked for forgiveness because of the fact that he had also helped aga sahib in deceiving or withholding information from amir about the identity real identity of hasan so let us come back to how rahim khan talks about aga sahib to amir in let us go back to this uh rahim khan tells amir forgive your uh, forgive me if you will that means i am not bothered whether you forgive me or not forgive your father if you may but forgive yourself you must in fact this very very sharp edged statement is basically indicative of the fact that rahim khan not only does rahim khan <coughs> love and respect the memory of agar sahib he also has much to say in his own support or defense against the calumny heaped upon by an irate amir 
Similarly, Hassan is a boy when we meet him for the first time, and later on he is described as a tall and muscularly built man by Rahim Khan, who can even lay down his life, that means I am talking about Hassan, in protecting the property and rights of his ascent lord, almost feudal in his sense of loyalty. Similarly, we have talked about Baba, we have talked about Hassan and Amir. The other, Rahim Khan. Rahim Khan is considered to be the conscience of the text because it is he who actually gives us his opinion about the good and the evil. The only deception that Rahim Khan is accused of, or may be accused of, is that thick Is a where was I? Kuntani got a Sir, Rahim Rahim Khan and Baba Bishop. Rahim Khan, Rahim Khan. Uh, uh, is the theft of the information, withholding of the information about Hassan from Amish. Otherwise, Rahim Khan is the conscience of the text who always plays the counselor to both Amir and his father. Now we come to the most important and interesting of all characters in the Kite Runner, that is Asif. Asif is considered to be a sociopath, one who beats and rapes, sodomizes one and others, one and all, whom he can entice or browbeat or beat into submission. But at the same time, he is presented as a fearless fighter against Soviet invasion, invasion of Afghanistan. He is, in a way, a typecast image of the Oriental. Because Khaled Husseini, despite his great love for his country, is, as a writer, writing from the perspective or subject position of an America-based Vichy. Now, we have discussed the main characters in a nutshell. We have to talk about characters like Iqbal Torizhi, the powerful ex-general who plays a very important part in the novel's plot because he is the father of Amir's wife. That is, Amir's she is a typical Afghan military brass hat, a top shot, a hot shot, as we would like to call him, but now languishing in exile in America. But he has got a suave, polished, 
exterior. A swab polished exterior. Similarly, he has some steel in him, as is indicated by his refusal to uh, of uh, refusal to uh, Amir when he wants to give the manuscript to Sultan. He is a man of Nang and Namush. as the Afghans would call it. Now, one of the most important problems of the text is the characteristic criticism of Afghan society in which like Umofia of Kino uh, Achebe's things fall apart, the female principle is often, almost always, set at naught. That is why Sanawar is presented mostly as a commodity. And Sufia Akrami, our Amish dead mother is just referred to off and on without attaching any great importance to her. However, Sulaya and his, her mother plays a very important role in the maturation of our hero, Amit. Ali is a very significant but very, very complex character. A cripple who has been in love with but in a very ineffectual relationship with Sanawal, Hassan's biological mother. But despite his position of a cripple, Ali has got a fierce sense of self-respect and prestige, which induces him to leave the cozy confines of Amir's Kabul home and Ali is often talked up as a very capable and experienced person. So, so far as the first category is concerned, we have already discussed in some detail what the characters say, do, and or think. And in